Hi guys, we are back again. I am teacher Simone. Hi everyone, I'm teacher Dali. Okay, so good to be here with you today to talk about listening to an opening talk. But before, let's remember your journey and the journey of the ladies who are in the conference, okay? So here we have, all right, so let's go here. Mariana and Marta. Mariana and Marta are at NAFSA conference, okay? Good, remember that? So, what happened, Dali, in the conference? First, they had a conference welcoming dinner when they socialized with the other participants. And now, the next appointment is listen to an opening talk, uma palestra de abertura. Okay, good. So, this is our experience today. Talking about our experience, Dali, talk more about our learning objectives. Okay, Simone, our learning objectives are Conhecer o conceito de active listening e suas principais características. Reconhecer algumas características da linguagem corporal que nos ajudam na construção de significados. Identificar os tipos de listening existentes e praticar a compreensão em um exemplo de welcome speech, ou seja, um discurso de boas-vindas. Ok, so now it's time to start. So let's start here with me, ok? So here we have to listen. To listen means to understand, to feel, to perceive, to sense, and to realize. To understand, compreender. Here we have different feelings. A gente tem sentidos e sensações ligadas às emoções. Okay? So we have all of this and we have more explanation in our material. Okay? So if we mean that we have we understand more what is listening. Now is active listening. Dali, what is active listening? What is listening with all the senses? Okay, active listening means you hear what people are really saying or you hear the words, right? You hear not only the words, but you are aware of the whole situation. So when you hear this, you are aware of the context, okay? You have to analyze what is in that context. And you try to understand the whole message in terms of its main ideas. What are the most important topics? What are the most important ideas in that speech? Okay, so here we have all the senses. Now let's focus more on the listening aspects. So here we have Active listening involves understanding and the message through, okay? So you understand and you have the message. What is it? Here we have the words you hear, the sounds, tone of voice, o tom de voz, accents, que são as pronúncias, pause and rhythm, okay? And here we have and the body language. Yes, it's really important because the body talks, for example. Now I am in your class, you can see that I am really happy because I smile, I use my gestures friendly. But sometimes it's really important you can notice if people is really nervous when they talk. So the body will say, really important for the listening and for the comprehension. Okay, and now, okay, so how to show? We are talking about listening, but we are in a conference and we are socializing, so we are interacting with people. We listen, and how to show you are actively involved. Dali, can you talk more about this aspect? Okay, there are signs, are, there are aspects that makes you get involved in the conversation, right? And what are they? First, you can make eye contact. It's very important when you talk to people that you look at in their eyes, okay? To understand, to make contact, okay? Show the speaker you are following what he or she is saying by using facial expressions and head nods, okay? What are head nods? When you agree or you don't agree, right? To, to show that you understand the message. Good. Ask questions to keep conversation going, right? The people does, the, doesn't, they don't talk alone, right? You can ask questions to ask something, to clear something, right? You show your interest by asking questions. 
Use paraphrasing whenever you feel the, you need to improve your understanding. What is the meaning of paraphrasing, Simone? Okay, paraphrasing is when you use different words or different expressions to say the same thing, okay? É o parafrasear. It's not necessary to use the same vocabulary that uh, uh, the person who is talking to you is using. Use your vocabulary. And sometimes if you don't remember the word, ask about the word or use the word the person used, okay? The most important is, remember, in Portuguese, when we are talking face to face, so it's important to continue the conversation. Use the same strategies and these strategies here in English. It's the same, it's interaction, okay? The difference is it's an interaction in English. And here I continue with you. So avoid interrupting the speaker, okay? Let the speaker talk. It's easy for you if you listen, you understand, because you need to process the information. It's English. Listen, process the information, and then continue your interaction. It's easier, okay? And then you have avoid distracting noises and gestures. So uh, imagine, for example, some people use, uh, like if you are on a desk, some people like to with a pen or something. So distracting, okay, sounds, no click, click, uh, no moving around, okay, cell so phones. yes, no cell, no phones, cell phones, right? Okay, and don't over talk. Over talk means talk too much. Okay. okay, yeah, Belly. Okay, there are people that talk all the time. They talk, 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 and this is not very good when you are talking to someone or to understand the message. Yeah, and one important aspect, okay? Now I go directly to you. It's very common in conferences. So we raise the hand to ask a question. That's good. Go to the focus, ask the question. Some people Talk, 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 to show knowledge, para mostrar que sabe. And then after that, they ask the question, please, don't do it. Go direct to the point, okay? So, now, Dali, let's go here. So, let's talk more about the primary purposes of listening. Okay, the primary purpose of listening, Simone, we have already seen this in our English 2. Mm -hmm. E nós emprestamos some of these strategies for this opening talk, right? And what are they? It is listen for gist, listen for specific information, Listen in detail and listen to infer something. Let's see each one of these now, okay? Okay, so let's go over here, okay? Now, guys, we practice together. Yes, listening activity, you and us. So, the first time we show you the video, we ask you some questions about the listening for the gist. Listening for the gist are the main ideas of the video. So what do you do in the first time? You just listen, look in the video, and then you take note. Take note of everything, okay? And we correct. And then we continue practicing other strategies. We ask the question, and then you watch the specific part of the video, you answer. And so we have the opportunity of practice. Let's do it together. Let's see how it works, okay? So now let's go over here. So with me now. So what we are going to do, here we have an experience with the governor, John Kasich, okay? John Kasich, is, he is the governor of Ohio. Here it is an experience of a conference, okay? And he is talking about some interesting topics about the conference, okay? So now, what do you do? So, you listen and watch to the entire video, take notes and focus on the following. Attention to the main ideas. What are the main ideas that you listen in the governor's speech? Let's do it. Okay, and then we check. Welcome to the second annual STEM conference in downtown Cleveland. Of course you know it's in downtown Cleveland because you're there and I'm not. I'm really sorry that I can't be with you today though. 
We need more educators like you who are excited about innovation. I applaud all of you for coming here to do your part in advancing the critically important STEM subjects. The economy and the world are, are constantly changing. We know that. And one of the most powerful catalysts for that change is technology. And so we have to prepare our kids for the challenges of tomorrow. And that means we must constantly reevaluate and update the strategies that we use to teach our kids. I mean, you understand it, which is why you're here. Our shared commitment to giving students a 21st century education experience, it's essential to making sure that they have the tools to meet what is growing in ever higher standards. Here in the Buckeye State, the STEM subjects are a driving force behind the work we've done over the past four years to attract, retain top talent, and diversify industries in our state. You know, I talk to CEOs every week, and one of the things they ask me is, is Ohio's workforce trained for the jobs we're prepared to bring to Ohio? Well, science, technology, engineering, math, they're the fields where these jobs are going to be, and they're good-paying jobs, exciting jobs that this generation needs to be prepared for. You know, what an opportunity you have over the next couple of days. You have the ability to speak with other educators and industry leaders in STEM fields. You can pick their brains, go back to your own community, and implement what you've learned or, you know, something that you thought up on your own. I encourage you to ask questions, of course, mix it up. I always like to do that. When educators, families, communities, and businesses work together, you know, it makes a real difference. I don't know how we can miss when we put that group together. So I want to thank you for, your, for what you do, and I want to thank you for being ambassadors for STEM education in your own community, in your own town, and God bless. Thank you. Okay, how did you like the video? Okay, so let's go here. Main ideas, what are the main ideas? Let's check your answer with our answer. And the answers are welcoming the participants, okay? Talking about the importance of technology, the educator's mission, and what the participants can do, okay? So this is activity number one. Now, let's go together with that Lee. Let's do a second activity. Dali, now, what is the activity? Okay, now we are going to listen for specific information, right? This is another strategy. You need to focus on one information. What is information? You probably noticed that the governor was not at the conference. You probably ask yourself, why isn't the governor at the conference? Now, let's watch the video again and try to focus on this information, right? Let's go. Okay, just remember, take notes. Welcome to the second annual STEM conference in downtown Cleveland. Of course you know it's in downtown Cleveland because you're there and I'm not. I'm really sorry that I can't be with you today though. We need more educators like you who are excited. Okay, now let's check. Okay, you check here with me. So, here we have the governor. He doesn't mention, okay, why he's not in the conference. He uses some words like, I'm really sorry that I can't be with you though. Okay, this is one of the words he uses. Okay, so now let's continue to our third activity, activity number three. So, Dali, in the activity number three, we talk about listening in detail, that's it? Right, now he's, you need to focus on one specific information, right? And what is information? Right after the governor introduced himself, he started talking about education in the 21st century. What did he say about this? Okay, just remember, take note, and after that, we check. We need more educators like you who are excited about innovation. I applaud all of you for coming here to do your part in advancing the critically important STEM subjects. The economy and the world are, are constantly changing, we know that. And one of the most powerful catalysts for that change is technology. And so we have to prepare our kids for the challenges of tomorrow. And that means we must constantly reevaluate and update the strategies that we use to teach our kids. I mean, you understand it, which is why you're here. Our shared commitment to giving students a 21st century education experience, it's essential to making sure that they have the tools to meet what is growing in ever higher standards. Now let's check again your notes with our notes, okay? So 
come here with me. Here we have, here are some of our notes. So, he's saying that more educators are excited about innovation, okay, technology, and that those educators, they prepare our kids, okay? Those educators are commit, ha they have commitment to the 21st century education experience and other words, okay? Good? So, what do you think about the strategies? What do you think about listening, okay? Good. We, were, we are focusing on, so far, ideas, strategies, words, and details. How about uh, if we talk about uh, the attitude, mood, and tone of voice? Dali, what is it? Uh, this is listening to infer. You have to observe his behavior, his face, okay, his movements, to know the mood, okay? Yes. The mood is humor, okay? O estado de espírito, let's say about, let's say like this, good? So, what can you infer according to what, to what you see? What can you say about this aspects in the governor's attitude. So, let's see the video again, some part of it, okay? And then again, write, and then we check. Welcome to the second annual STEM conference in downtown Cleveland. Of course you know it's in downtown Cleveland because you're there and I'm not. I'm really sorry that I can't be with you today though. We need more educators like you who are excited about innovation. I applaud all of you for coming here to do your part in advancing the critically important STEM subjects. The economy and the world are, are constantly changing, we know that, and one of the most powerful catalysts for that change is technology. And so we have to prepare our kids for the challenges of tomorrow, and that means we must constantly reevaluate and update the strategies that we use to teach our kids. I mean, you understand it, which is why you're here. Our shared commitment to giving students a 21st century education experience, it's essential to making sure that they have the tools to meet what is growing in ever higher standards. Here in the Buckeye State, the STEM subjects are a driving force behind the work we've done over the past four years to attract, retain top talent, and diversify industries in our state. You know, I talk to CEOs every week, and one of the things they ask me is, is Ohio's workforce trained for the jobs we're prepared to bring to Ohio? Well, science, technology, engineering, math, they're the fields where these jobs are going to be, and they're good-paying jobs, exciting jobs that this generation needs to be prepared for. You know, what an opportunity you have over the next couple of days. You have the ability to speak with other educators and industry leaders in STEM fields. You can pick their brains, go back to your own community, and implement what you've learned or, you know, something that you thought up on your own. I encourage you to ask questions, of course, mix it up. I always like to do that. When educators, families, communities, and businesses work together, you know, it makes a real difference. I don't know how we can miss when we put that group together. So I want to thank you for, your, for what you do, and I want to thank you for being ambassadors for STEM education in your own community, in your own town, and God bless. Thank you. Okay, what do you think about the governor's attitude? Totally positive, all right? So, now let's check some of the aspects. Here we have, he has a positive attitude, of course. He's welcoming the participants of a conference in the state of Ohio. He uses friendly gestures. He smiles. And he has a nice tone of voice, okay? He looks like a calm and relaxed, so it makes you feel uh, like comfortable and have pleasure, okay? So, and he uses body language to engage the audience, right, Ali? Yes. Talk more about the body language, is it important? Yes, body language is very important for you to use it with the message, right? This can show a lot of things. Remember the beginning of our, our class today, we talked about this, right? That's perfect. So. We talked in the beginning and now we are exactly at the end of the class. So now, Dali, let's remember, so to wrap up this class, what have they learned so far? Okay, up to now you have conhecer o conceito de active listening e suas principais características. 
nós podemos reconhecer também algumas características da linguagem corporal que nos ajudam à construção de significados, a identificar os tipos de listening e a praticar a compreensão e um exemplo de welcome speech que nós acabamos de ver. That's it, ok? So, we really hope that you enjoyed our class because our intention is to show you good experiences and to practice together with you. As always we say, it's really a pleasure to be here with you and we see you really soon, right, Dali? Yes, next class, ok? Ok, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.